We are in one gorgeous part of the world. This is Lembe Straits. It's in the northern part of Indonesia, a place called North Sulawesi. This is the number one place in the world to look for camouflaged animals. We're here on an expedition that really is the culmination in an eight-year odyssey, and we have a specialized instrument called a hyperspectral imager to see if we can image camouflaged animals. The primary purpose of this project is to gain a better understanding of the visual world of animals. The quest here is much larger than just camouflage. What we're really looking at are these broad questions of how sophisticated nature is, the things that are going on out there that we're unaware of. One of the great questions is how did this invertebrate animal come to evolve this complex looking brain and certainly diverse and complex behavior. Roger Hanlon, Senior Scientist at the Marine Biological Laboratory in Woodsville, Massachusetts. My specialty is diving research on cephalopods that change color and pattern. I'm Daria Akainak. I'm an oceanographer and I specialize in underwater imaging. Using a hyperspectral camera to study camouflage is actually really powerful in terms of revealing mysteries. An octopus or a cuttlefish on a coral reef seems to have extraordinary camouflage. You have to remember that we're making that judgment based on our cameras, which are all based on human vision only. The hyperspectral camera has 16 color channels. That's a lot more than the three we have as humans. So when we take the hyperspectral camera image, we use what we know about their predator visual systems and we project hyperspectral images into an animal's world. Then we can see if the camouflage that looks so good to us is actually as effective to the predator as we think. making at least three dives, if not four per day for eight or nine days in a row. It's very taxing, uh, but it's exciting at the same time. Probably the highlight of this week has been at a reef called Angel's Window. We found the octopus up in the shallow part, which had beautiful, colorful coral, and we had this fantastic sequence where the animal was just moving on different colorful backgrounds, stopping, and we were getting gorgeous data. It was heaven to a biologist to see this animal changing and doing its full repertoire of tricks with perfect color and clear water. locked up and we couldn't really get it going again. We took it back to the boat, we opened it up, we checked all the connections, we checked the battery, and we just could not get it focusing back and forth. Turns out one of the wires broke. Typical field work. Let's hope. <laughs> I've devoted my 40 years to this. I want to know how life works. That's what biologists do. If you look at brain development on planet Earth, the vertebrate line, which we're a part of, creates really incredibly complex brains. But if you look at an evolutionary tree, the last common ancestor was a worm with very few neurons. And that's where things split 500, 600 million years ago. A basic question pops up at this point in time. 
Is the brain structure, the fundamental brain structure of an octopus different from that of the vertebrate line? Down to the tiniest cortical structure that is processing information in a different way, this could be a boon to the artificial intelligence community. Give them a different way to approach this subject, new framework for testing ideas, and really to inspire a different way to thinking about artificial intelligence. equipment didn't work very well, we did not get the data we wanted, so that was a little bit of a tragedy. Little tragedies happen all the time in field research. The idea that there could be another kind of intelligence and brain system out there is absolutely fascinating. It's remarkable how little we know about the brains of these animals that mesmerize us all the time. We're all tied into this floating thing we call planet Earth. We have to understand it better. 